Listen, <laughs> if you're asking somebody to write you a letter of recommendation and they're like, okay, sure, please <laughs> just run. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Grace Patrice and you are watching the Pre-Med Hub. It really feels nice to be saying welcome back to my channel because this is my second video. And before I go into today's video, I just want to say thank you to everyone who has watched my first video, um, rejected from, um, rejected from medical school to accepted to medical schools and accepted into Ivy Leagues. Thank you guys so much. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the actual strategies or the changes I made to my application the second time I applied. I did get a lot of questions like, what did you do differently? So this, so <laughs> today's video is all about all the things that I the changes I pretty much did to my application. I'm gonna be talking about five areas of the application. The first one is the GPA. Secondly, we're gonna be talking about MCAT. The third one, we're gonna be talking about extracurricular activities. Number four is gonna be letters of recommendation. And number five is gonna be the personal statement. So let's get right into the video. Yes, so um, to start off with GPA. Okay, so first year I got a 4.0, second year I got a 2.58. Third year, I got a 2.86. <laughs> That's why GPA was struggling. <laughs> and this is just like a point. Um, if you are watching this video, like a first year or second year, please guard your GPA with all your heart, your soul, your mind, like your strength. Because once your GPA goes down, it's really hard for it to come up. So um, just just a pro tip. Um, protect your GPA at all costs. And then for the fourth year, my science GPA was actually a 3.41. So by then you could see like an upward trend in GPA. So what did I do? The first time I just applied with um, this GPA. So my total um, undergraduate science GPA was I think a 3.18. And when I applied to medical school, I didn't get in. So at that time, I really had to think to myself, what are the ways I can improve my GPA? Well, there are two ways you can improve your GPA. The first one is doing a post back program. And the second one is actually doing a special master's program. So a post back program is usually geared towards pre-medical students who haven't finished all their undergraduate undergraduate um, pre-medical courses but for somebody like me I had finished all my pre-medical um, classes you know I had taken the MCAT so for me I was very interested in a special master's program and that's what special master's programs are for they are meant for those who have finished all their pre-medical requirements but still want to bolster their credentials by increasing their GPA and get into medical school so that was what I did the special master's program I did because I've had so many questions about it and I have a whole different video on that it's called the uh it's called gateways to medicine healthcare and research at the university at brown university and it's a master of science in medical sciences program so that was the program that i did and when i went there god being so good i got a 4.0 gpa and that really um strengthened my numbers when it came to like gpa wise um, medical schools really want to see an upward trend in gpa and they really want to see that you're you keep improving upon yourself and that was what i was doing okay so now we're going to be talking about mcat okay so guys Whew. MCAT is a um, I didn't know if you've <laughs> this exam is not an easy exam and it's just I don't know in my opinion I think it's, it's a little bit weird um, it tests its contents but also it tests your test taking skills and abilities and stuff like that so yeah the first time I took the MCAT I got a 503 and that was what I used to apply to medical schools the first time and after my master's program, I decided that I wanted to give myself a second chance at the MCAT again. So um, between graduating and going back to work, I had a month off. So that was what I used. That was the time I used to study for the MCAT. And when I took it again, I got a 509. And um, once again, those are my scores on the screen. And as you can see, um, my scores did improve. <laughs> Cars improved by one point. <laughs> Which is like, it doesn't even reflect the amount of work I put in, but you know, that's, that's just, that's just life and that's just cars. Unfortunately, when it comes to like how to study for cars, I can't help you. Um, I, I know there are a lot of good videos on YouTube, but, um, that was like one of my weak areas. So, um, um, I'm just glad that I did well in the other, um, 
other sections and overall you can see an improvement. The third thing I want to talk about is extracurricular activities. Now this is what I'll say for anyone who has a low science GPA or a low MCAT score. Your extracurriculars need to shine. <laughs> They really need to shine because this is an area where you can really show medical schools your passions and who you truly are. In this short video, um, I want to highlight three things when it comes to extracurriculars. Number one, research. When I think about research, I see it as the bridge between what medicine is now and what medicine would be in the future. So that's why it's important for pre-medical students and even medical students to be con to be, you know, continue, I don't know what the word is, to continue involving themselves in research and being part of that group that is always bringing out solutions to problems. So that is why I would highly recommend research. Um, if you look on the screen, um, um, you can see that most schools, when they're, they you know, gathering their statistics, a lot of the students coming in have research. And even if you go on a couple of schools' websites and stuff, they will say, oh, you know, research experience is highly recommended and stuff like that. For me, anytime I would see a school say something was recommended, I change it to required. <laughs> in my dictionary, it was required. And I did the absolute best I could possibly do in terms of like getting research experience. I have wet lab research experience. I have public health research experience. I have clinical trials research experience. I just always try to get myself involved in research. And I think it really helped me when it came to like secondaries and even like interviews, like really having real, real, having, you know, real world. <laughs> having real world experiences research i would highly recommend it like low-key is required <laughs> i mean they'll say it's recommended they'll say it's recommended but change it in your dictionary to require it maybe it's recommended for other people but for you it's recommended okay um do your best to get research experience okay so the other thing i want to talk about is actually getting um patient interaction experience so if you're a pre-med and you're watching this you know by now that shadowing is required point blank period period to like it's required um you should aim for between 70 to 100 hours doing um shadowing you know eight hours is not enough because then it's like hmm how do you convince medical school that you know um you're interested in becoming a doctor if you've spent like only eight hours shadowing now um shadowing is required um not you know you know what i'm saying they'll say recommend it's just get it <laughs> I get it because it really shows that you're exploring the field of medicine but shadowing is great but there are other even better opportunities because shadowing low-key you know you're standing in the corner of a room breathing air <laughs> I mean it's nice you're observing the doctor and all of that and you can write a really good essay on like your shadowing experiences but it's really not enough you want experiences that gives you like real patient encounter so you're looking at things like medical scribe you're looking at emt emt was something i really wanted to do but i never got the opportunity to do that you're looking at you're looking at like cna you know anything that will give you like actual interactions with patients now the third one which i don't know if a lot of people talk about is that Pursue extracurriculars that you actually like. I majored in studio art um, with my concentration in film photography. So I did like, I spent like three years really studying film photography, which like a lot of people don't even take film, photo, um, film photographs and all of that, but I really enjoyed it. And even outside of class, I still like heavily pursue like photography and I think that also really helped me stand out when it came to application because I was a very different applicant I talk about film photography heavily in my application I talk about photography very heavily in my applications and I think it really made me stand out as a um, you know pre-medical student applicant so that's what I have to say for extracurricular letters of recommendation <laughs> I don't know why I'm even happy saying this but um Letters of recommendation. This is a place where I personally feel medical schools can really begin to sort out applicants because if we're all coming in with similar 
GPAs and similar MCAT scores and similar extracurriculars, letters of recommendations are a way that you can really stand out. And the thing about letters of recommendation is that you don't get to see what your recommenders write. They listen. <laughs> if you're asking somebody to write you a letter of recommendation and they're like, okay, sure, please <laughs> just run. <laughs> Just be like, oh, sure. And then come back and be like, okay, sir, thank you very much. But I would, you know, come up with something and just humbly decline it. Because to be honest, the last thing you want is for somebody to be writing you like a really short and sweet letter. Like, the way you know someone's going to write you a good letter, one of the best letters that you can possibly get is if the person actually offers to write you a letter and i had the privilege of one of my professors saying hey let me know when, if you need a letter of recommendation i'll be more than happy to write you one and a letter like that you absolutely know that that's going to be an outstanding letter there was no need for me to even send my resume another way is to gauge their reaction like if somebody says like sure oh okay send me your resume um i don't know but a little questionable <laughs> Because for me, the second time I asked people that I knew I could trust and that I had a relationship with, and they were all like, absolutely, I would love to write you a letter. And um, one of my professors actually offered to do an interview with me, like an hour interview. So do ask your letters, um, your recommenders, if um, they have like an hour to spend with you, just like chat and cut. Um, it's good that way they could like catch up with you and see where you're at and what to include in the letter and stuff like that. So that's gonna be my advice when it comes to letters of recommendation. The last point I wanna talk about, and I feel like it's the cherry on the icing or the icing on the cake. I don't know, whichever one you pick. Um, is your personal statement so the personal statement should um it's so funny how like when i look at my first personal statement and the second one like the first personal statement didn't even talk about me or didn't even talk about my interests but your personal statement should really do three things number one they should talk about you who are you what are your interests what are your skills what are your talents number two why medicine you should have this like one or two sentences that are like really strong and really memorable as to like why you decided to pursue medicine i think it's key even if you didn't have like an epiphany like maybe something happened just like your journey there should be this certain point where like you decide at least for me when i was writing my essay that's like this certain point where i decide that i want to be a physician and then i go on on i go on talking about the things i did after that decision which was the decision to like explore medicine medicine even further and lastly another question you want to answer which is very important come close come just come close are you close <laughs> are you close okay you want to answer this question why should medical schools pick you yes you because you are writing this as you're writing this essay in a way that you want to be granted an interview and i remember reading online where this like job recruiter was saying that um you write your resume not to get a job but to get an interview and i think it it, it also you know runs similar when it comes to like med school's application something like your essay i mean the the entire goal of your application is to get into medical school but you should write in a way that people would want to interview you and want to ask you more questions about what you wrote so um a really good way to answer this question like why should medical schools pick you is to go to the amc website and look at the core competencies that you're looking for and on there i think i'm gonna put it on the screen but um when i was writing my essay um so <laughs> backtrack when you go on there look at the competencies that best speak to you so for me when i went on their website i competency that best spoke to me was like teamwork cultural competency adaptability and resilience and my love for medicine research critical things thinking skills all of that so um choose like five and that's what you should like um you know 
structure your essay around because these are the skills that medical schools are looking for and you really want to show them that hey i have these skills and i'm coming i like i'm a good fit for your school okay guys so that's what i have for you for this video i really hope you found this video very helpful let me know in the comment section below if you would like for me to you know explain in much more details any of the areas i spoke about like if you'd like an mcat study video or extracurriculars or like how to ask for letters of recommendation and um what was the last one personal statement help let me know in the comment section below and i'll be more than happy to you know do another video talking about all of that i hope you found this video helpful i'm repeating myself <laughs> i really hope you found it um i've <laughs> I really hope you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell button so you don't miss a notification. Once again, my name is Grace Patrice and you are watching the Pre-Med Hub. Thank you.